Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. Gonna be a busy day. We are hitting the road for Texas later on today. Got a bunch of stuff to do in the meantime, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with Ben and Jerry. Now, they did actually shed and look at how absolutely wonderful they look. Oh my gosh, these guys look amazing. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, the shed is not very good, so I'm just gonna look around a little bit, see if I can find the head. Oh, here's the head right here. I can see it, but ah. That's not a very good shed right there at all. So basically what I was trying to do is, you guys know that we're gonna be starting to do jewelry with the snakes. You guys know we're gonna start doing jewelry with the snake sheds, and I wanted to get like a really good two-headed snake shed and do a piece of jewelry. I think that would have been dope. And so I was really hopeful, but uh, the shed didn't come out good. You can see the eye right there. You can see stuff, but it definitely doesn't look good. But nevertheless, Ben and Jerry does look absolutely incredible. Oh my God, two-headed snakes, how awesome is that? Whew. So we're actually gonna weigh Matilda today just to see her progress. She was 112 pounds about what, two and a half months ago, three months ago, something like that. Do you think, she, she sure seems like she's gained a bunch. What do you think she's at now? Oh my gosh, she's I moving. I know, she's moving. Here we go. I think she's gonna be at least 125 pounds. 133 pounds. Oh, holy crap. Holy moly. Matilda, she's eating girl. good. You're eating good. Okay, want to get her back in? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. Whew. 133 pounds. You're getting so big, girl. <laughs> and the whole idea is, is that we want to keep track of weight on animals often, so you can see their progress, right? The fact that she's gained 20 pounds, 21 pounds, in just a short period of time tells us she's eating, she's growing, she's doing all this stuff she's gonna do. Again, she's gonna eventually get, you know, maybe 350, 400 plus pounds. So uh, she's got a long way to go, but certainly if she's gaining 20, 20 something pounds every few months, she's gonna get there pretty quick. So, oh my God, that's awesome. That tells me that we need to work on getting this door. Yeah, we've gotta like. work on a big, bigger enclosure and get the door so she can walk out. Right. Because lifting her is uh, definitely, it's a lot heavier. You're doing so good, girl. Love you. Any animal tragedies today? No, no tragedies. Everything pretty boring at the house. No one. Swim with the crank no. Cleaner. No water leaks. No, nothing exciting. Just How was another... that podcast, man? Was Dude, that fun? I loved it. I thought it was really good. There were so many positive comments and people commenting on the, you know, chat and stuff like that. I had a really good time. I can't wait to do it again. So it's awesome. I mean, definitely was a lot of fun. Did yeah. Really good there, you were great. Uh, if you guys didn't see that podcast, I'll put a link in the description. Definitely go subscribe to that channel as well as check out Noah and Eric. Probably be every Friday night within, you know, with some exceptions, I'm sure. And that's actually going to be called Choices with Noah and Eric. And of course, checking in, same channel on Wednesdays with uh, with the family and uh, guests and stuff like that. So definitely go pay that some love. I cannot wait to get Al Machino next door. He is such an amazing animal. Of course, he's an albino and a moco. That's why they call him Machinos. And uh, I tell you, he's just got such a great disposition. I come down and mess with him a lot, but I can't wait till he's over there so everyone can hold him all the time. I think most weekends we bring him over at least one night just because he's so awesome. Within the next six, seven weeks, we'll be ready to go and open up and he'll be over there full time. I know Lori gets a little crazy about having so many retics, but to be honest with you, retics are awesome and people love them. I mean, I get her idea, the fact the diversity but we still have a lot of diversity and I love reticulated pythons oh and by the way about open right now we're shooting for the second week of March to be the kind of grand reopening of the new place I'll make an official announcement on that but if you're starting to plan to come out I'd love to have you we'll have a big party and stuff like that definitely looking for the second week of March looking through all the little razor snakes that we have like I do a lot and this one really jumped out at me this is actually an anery that's actually a strawberry so the strawberry gene is uh it's kind of like a hypoish gene but it's not quite the same as a normal hypo and put together this thing looks really cool i love just kind of how the pink is really coming through it real heavy definition of course this is an oka t bloodline too so you have those really heavy black saddles and stuff like that so i don't know i just had to show you guys because i thought it was super cool i've got a tour in the house how are you guys i'm sorry your name again my name's june june and hi this is my daughter hope hi hope june. we're here from hope. memphis memphis tennessee i love the salt life shirt thank you Absolutely. for supporting me appreciate it we're gonna have a good time you want to look at who started yes yeah. All right, let's do it. Guys, I want just a little serious time with you right now because, uh, you know, 
a pretty crazy event happened in the reptile world now and, and it started a few years ago that affected so many people including myself and it started with uh, a friend of mine Ben Rennick who was uh, a reptile breeder really good guy and I'm not saying that because he passed away but he really was a good guy I mean he you know in the reptile world oftentimes there's a lot of issues and there's backstabbing and this and that and Ben was not only a guy that took unbelievable care of his animals and had incredible animals but also was just a great person you never hear him say anything bad about people uh, he's just a good guy unfortunately a few years ago he was shot dead in his facility and the reptile community I was so proud to be a part of really galvanized and raised funds and, and, and got behind his family for the loss and we all scratch our head like how could this happen to such a nice guy what was going on and for the last few years we also were all confused that there were no arrests there was no apparent leads up until just recently even the police had said that they had no leads they weren't sure who had killed him unfortunately in the last few days we found another unbelievably tragic thing that it was allegedly his wife that actually murdered him and it really hit me hard guys I mean like it, it's like you know I knew both of them they were both my friends and 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 I felt so bad for her when it happened I thought oh my god they were such a great couple and 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 again people raised money and donated lots and lots of money to her and, and and to the kids too which was important but to think now that she was behind her allegedly I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure she was from the police reports it's just so shocking and 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 I just had to talk about it because it, it really has affected me personally of course starting with the loss of Ben a few years ago it was so tragic and such a, a, a smash that that could happen but then now to hear what the reasoning behind it and apparently he was going to leave her and she was worried about money and the kids and so instead of just trying to make a new life for herself she decided to take a life a, a really great life at that and the reptile community lost an amazing person when that happened and it's just so tragic and, and I just needed to talk to you guys about it and um, and to be honest with you I, I don't want to have a video like this where I'm talking to you about this and turn it into where I'm making money with AdSense and stuff like that so I really want to donate all the proceeds of this video anything I make on this video I'd like to donate it I'm not sure if I should donate it to US Ark, the United States Association of Reptile Keepers, because I know Ben was a big part of that. I certainly support them. Or if there should be another charity. I don't know what charity. If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments. Uh, and, and I'll make a donation for anything that we potentially make off this video to that charity. Because again, I don't want a tragedy like this to ever you know, make money for me. So I don't want you guys to think I just need to get this off my chest. And, and really, I feel horrible for his children and the rest of his family that they had to go through this and uh, just wild uh, you know, again maybe in the comments you guys can let me know how you feel if you've heard about this I'll put a link in the description to all the information you guys can read up and and I don't know if we can do anything else as a community to help the family um, so let me know because it again this is near and dear to my heart and it, it's it's really affected me I've talked about the scaleless rat snakes and really even corn snakes but in particular the scaleless Texas rats and the kind of polymorphism which is just a fancy name for variability of them you know they all look completely different I want to show you a handful that we're raising up that are radically different of course this one's cool it's got a little bit of remnant scalation going on a little bit of a pink color to it uh, and again they'll go from pink to red to you can see this one's like orange but has quite a bit of scalation lots of remnant scales throughout but it's more of an orange and black animal which is really cool but look at how scaleless the head is right there it's really wild out you get just the kind of extra eyeballs that look like it's on top but uh, the rest of the head is scaled and that's what's so neat about them is that everyone is so different again another one this one has like a kind of translucent nose to it it's a kind of much more faded gray looking snake you don't have that high rich contrast in them and that's what's cool is everyone looks a little bit different as a baby and then as they get bigger they even get more interesting look at this one here <laughs> doggy that is 
is a ripper right there. I mean, it's beautiful reds, blacks, got the white freckles on it. I mean, this is the ones that I like the best, to be honest. Well, you know, I like them all, to be honest with you, but those are really cool. And then take a look at this crazy monkey right here. This one, of course, has got all this pied marking in it, white coming through like all crazy. And again, that's why I like working with scaleless rat snakes, is that you can get so much variety from the same clutch. Although you can breed for specific things too. If you want to go with red ones or orange ones or yellow ones, you can actually polymorphically breed for them. Sometimes you get some other variation in the clutches, but uh, still, nevertheless, that's why I love scaleless rats so much. I absolutely love these giant leaf tail geckos, the Europlantis frimbriatus. They're incredible. And it's been such a pleasure working with these guys. And I've had a handful of clutches of eggs. She typically lays one egg at a time. And uh, unfortunately, I've never had one that has been fertile. Now what I've heard is oftentimes they need a little higher calcium in order to actually calcify the egg. And that may be our issue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually offer these guys snails. I guess that's a way to get them extra calcium, I guess with the shell or something like that. Regardless, we're gonna go ahead and get that as soon as I get back from Texas. And hopefully one day we can produce some of these guys. Cause I'm telling you what, it's definitely on my bucket list of animals. If I ever hatched out a little baby giant leaf tail gecko, I think I would faint. Work is continuing on. As you can see, they're doing some electrical work here. Now, while I'm gone, there's gonna be a lot of things happening over here as well. Lori actually has to paint these walls after everything gets sanded. Then they're gonna come in and actually do the drop ceiling. That's gonna make a huge difference. So paint, drop ceiling, this place is gonna be looking a completely different place when I get back, because they're gonna have doors on it, the windows will be in, all that type of stuff. So that's pretty exciting. And then right after I get back, like two days after I get back, we're gonna be doing the floor. Once the floor and the walls are painted and all that stuff, it's gonna look good and really just a little bit of finished electrical and uh, we're gonna be waiting for install day, which of course is February 10th now. Sorry, it was the third, now it's pushed to the 10th, so it's gonna be pretty cool. So I'm bummed that I'm leaving because I love to see this type of progress, but at the same time, it's gonna be awesome to get back and Lori and Noah will kind of show you guys what's going on while we're down in Texas. Lori, what do you got going on? Adding more geckos to the site. Oops. So I'm gonna get out of here in just a little bit. Okay. Got a lot going on, so paint Monday, Tuesday. Then Wednesday, we've got ceiling going in, a lot of moving parts. So I know I have complete faith that you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I trust in you. So you can be able to keep me posted? Yes, I will keep you posted. Um, I am very capable of getting everything done like I always do. I, I know I you are. I don't need you to give okay. me the list. <laughs> all right, well, good. well definitely uh, film too, okay? I want to send you clips so people know what's going on, all right? It's going to be fun. Right. Okay. All right. all right, I'm going to get on the run in a few minutes, all right? All right. I always have to say goodbye to my girl Belly. Belly, I'm gonna miss you so much. Every time I ever leave, I always say goodbye to her, and when I get back, I say hello to her, because she's just amazing. I'm gonna miss you, baby. You gonna be good when I'm gone? You're such a good girl. Thank you, baby girl. See you soon. All right, guys, ready to open up at the Reptarium? You guys ready? Ready to go. Okay, let's do this. Awesome. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi, welcome. Come on in, guys. You guys know that I hate not hanging out here at the Reptarium because I have such a good time when we're open. But unfortunately, I have no choice but to hit the road because we have to be in Texas. It's a long drive, 18, 20 hours, something like that. We're going to try to get about six or seven hours down tonight. So let's just go ahead, say our goodbyes, and hit the road. All right guys, we made it to the hotel room. Gonna get a little bit of sleep tonight and then we will start tomorrow and head to Universal Rock and then get a bang on all the bills for the Reptarium. It's gonna be amazing. I hope that you have a good night. If you enjoyed this video, can you do me a favor? Subscribe to our podcast channel right over here. Here is a playlist of vlogs that you can run through. Over here, you can subscribe to the vlog channel. Can you turn the post notification on for these two right here? Have a wonderful day. Be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.